Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Shane. And Melody. And today we hope this video is a blessing to you as much as it's going to be for us. Yes. We're here in Staffordsville, or I guess between Staffordsville Ish. and Eggleston, Virginia. Yep. No man's land, really. Giles County. Giles County. A place mm -hmm. called Wesley's Chapel. We got a little story that Melody's been working on for our book. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited to be here to get pictures for the book and to share this video with you. So, Yes, so stick around to hear a little bit about Preacher Sheffy, um, Bob Sheffy, who a lot of you guys may already know a little bit. But give us the thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe so you don't miss any of them. I just walked up that big hill, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. I'm huffing like a, you know how the preachers will do that? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, hey, yeah, they take a breath. <laughs> All right, Shane, do you want to read that for us? Sure. It says, in memory of our father, Reverend Robert S. Sheffy. He was born July 4th, 1820, and died August 30th, 1902, fully consecrated to God. Service, he preached the gospel without money and without price, and has entered upon his reward. The poor were sorry when he died. Yes. I just love that. Epitaph, is that what you call it? Yeah. So there is the gravesite of Reverend Robert Sheffy, Bob Sheffy, Preacher Sheffy, Brother Sheffy. Had a lot of names. Yeah. Um, and as you see, he was born in 1820, and through much of the 1800s, he was a Methodist rider preacher. He went by horseback from town to town to spread the gospel and he had a lot of outlandish kind of stories about him which kind of makes him legendary yeah. and a folklore in this area. I think he would better he would better be remembered or he would rather be remembered for his preaching. Yes. But his quirks have kept his legend living on which yes, helped he serve the purpose of he was very, spreading his message. He was very eccentric. Yeah. But, you know, I feel like a lot of good preachers are. A lot of stories about him, so you will have to read our book to get all of those. But we're going to give you some more information while we're here, too, and take a look around this beautiful, beautiful cemetery here in Giles County and also a little bit of the campground that he did the meetings at. Hey, I'm so glad so. we came here today, aren't you? I Just, know, me too. It was, it was a trek, you know, a lot of energy and effort went into coming, but yes. boy, the payoff was more than I dreamed. Oh, absolutely. I'll get a shot here of his wife's grave. This is his second wife, Eliza, and he had a son with her, you can see, in memory of my mother. So, she was a Stafford wife of Robert Sheffy. A dutiful daughter, devoted wife, loving mother, and faithful Christian. She rests from her labors, and her works do follow her. So, their gravesite together there. It's beautiful. Well, we finally made it up the side of the hill. Yeah. Had to get a little breath in, but... I think it's such a neat view from here, the little chapel, and then the three crosses to the right. Mm -hmm. So like we were saying, we're here. This is the Sheffy Prayer Chapel. And we're going to see if we can gain interest into this place and mm -hmm. take, take a look, look around. But look how cute it is. So cute. It just sits atop this hill, and it's just an mm -hmm. adorable location. Oh, yeah. And we've been blessed with opportunity to go in today. Yes. So we just came into the Sheffy Chapel. Mm -hmm. Such a neat little place here. Just got a few pews and a pulpit. But just enough for God to move, wouldn't you say? Yeah, the Sheffy Prayer Chapel. So that makes you think that this is a place that they come to be in prayer. And that's really... It's up the hill and away from the rest of the neighborhood. So it would be a great place for solitude and to really, if you're wanting to be alone with God... Mm -hmm. I would think this would be the place you'd want to come, wouldn't you? Yes, absolutely. And this is just right up from where he is buried and then right over where the um, camp meetings were held. So, mm -hmm. Look out the window here to see the perspective. 
It's so quiet and peaceful up here, though. It's just for it cemetery. It is. It's so nice. It's one of the more peaceful cemeteries you'll ever see. Oh, yes. Well, what we see before us is three wooden crosses. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of, don't you? Jesus, I hope. Well, Jesus, well, you forget what I was going to say. <laughs> Jesus, well, I hope. Well, you trumped me there. I was, thinking, I was going to say the song Three Wooden Crosses by Randy Travis. But no. Well. <laughs> Which is kind of Jesus. It's about Jesus. Huh? The sacrifice. Yeah. That's what I think of. We're getting around Easter. You know, trying to be. You know, you're supposed to be thinking about that. You know what I'm thinking about, though? Randy Travis. A father Tra and a preacher. <laughs> a father and a teacher. Oh, Let's walk up here. It's a little bit of a walk. There's yeah. another cabin we want to check out. Yeah, and this is all of like where the old fashioned camp meetings were held. Now they do the Robert Sheffy Memorial Camp Meeting. It was Wabash. I guess I'm saying that right. How do you spell it? W A B A S H. Wabash. Wabash. It's like the Wabash Cannonball. Right. Oh, man. All right. So they would camp out here for two weeks or more while attending a revival meetings. And the first was held in 1884. Wow, two weeks. Camping for two weeks. Yes. And the campground functioned until the early 1900s. And uh, the large shed that was used was actually caught on fire just shortly before Robert Sheffy's passing. Um, and he wanted to see it rebuilt, but that didn't happen in his lifetime, unfortunately. But he stoked the fires of revival in these mountains, and it's always good to celebrate. Well, let me just read your story about it, too, in the book. Yes. I, I helped a tiny bit with some of it. And yes. Some input, anyway. I mean, uh, and I did a lot of reading and research. I watched the movie. Sheffy. Yeah. It was, and that was very cool. But see, I thought I was familiar with the story, and it was. It wasn't as familiar as I thought it was. If yeah. that makes sense. When I when you told me a lot of the sound out, I was really fascinated and I can't wait to read the finished product. Myself. Oh yes. Well we found a blessing here, didn't we? Yes, I did not know this was here. Yeah. So this is our actual birthplace of Robert Sheffy. And it was moved here from Ivanhoe and restored in 2003. So yes, that is such a good blessing. Donated by Dorothy Connor. So Isn't that amazing to think? Dorothy. And how, what, look at the great shape. I know they had yes. to restore it with steel. And so he was born in Ivanhoe. And you know, one of the most commonly told stories about him was that he cursed the town of Ivanhoe yeah. because he had went back there during his preaching days and he uh, saw a lot of lewd conduct being happening there. So he cursed the town that it would be swallowed up into the ground. And ever since then, their industry uh, died out They've had an enormous par uh, problem with sinkholes, so a lot of people feel like it was literally cursed into the ground, like Robert Sheffy preached about. I've even known a few uh, local people from so, there that believe that. You know, yes. they, they've almost accepted. This, yeah. is, this is how it is. A lot of people do. Um, and I think that he gets a little bit of a bad rep for that, but he, I mean, I feel like he was a really great preacher man. He made a lot of efforts to spread the word of God. He didn't like what was being conducted there, and so he cursed the town, you know? A lot of times, tribulation will make you think about what really matters in life and who you can rely on, and that is always Jesus. So, but his mother passed away, I think, when he was, well, I don't know the exact age right off. He was an infant. And that's when he moved to Abingdon to live with his aunt. Oh, that's amazing to think this little tiny place was somebody's home when yes. their birthplace and then made their... Yeah, which was somebody. more common back then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good to see these just to give a reminder of, you know, Absolutely. how the way people lived. Yeah. So if, you, uh, if you put a curse on Honecker yet, or... I wouldn't curse Honecker. <laughs> no. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <clears throat> Can't get you to. I would never curse Hone Anchor. You won't turn on that hometown for nothing, will you? Well, there's not the conduct that was going on at, that he saw at Ivanhoe. Well, they got a horseshoe here. Like play horseshoes? Oh. One right here. 
People used to hang them up for luck, didn't they? But yes. I wouldn't think Brother Sheffy would be up for that, would you? I mm -hmm. He didn't need luck. And bless you. Exactly. So I have a lot of good stories about Preacher Sheffy in the story for our book, but one that I didn't get to include, I saw in the movie, I could never back it up, but I love this story, so I want to share it on this video. Preacher Sheffy had been called out by this woman who had an alcoholic husband, and he would tend to get a little heavy-handed when he had been drinking, so she called for his help, and his answer was to get the guy <laughs> once he had passed out and put him in a old bathtub out in the woods filled with alcohol and then he piled up like brush in a circle around the bathtub and caught it on fire so when the man woke up he thought that he was in hell and he got panicked and ran out of the circle and Preacher Sheffy said that would get him to stop drinking, but he was gonna check back in with her. I just thought that that was like the most creative and funny way <laughs> to help somebody, but he really did seem like he had a really good sense of humor about stuff too, but he wanted to see people get saved and live right for the Lord, so. I feel like that story gave you a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, with you. Me, I don't drink, thank God. <laughs> Well, I don't like seeing that. It looks like a bunch of remnants of headstones that are broken and displaced. I'm, I'm hoping that they were replaced. Yeah, I think that's... You know, they get eroded after a while and they need yeah. to be replaced. And maybe that's what's going on. Obviously not everywhere would be fortunate enough to have that, but... Unfortunately, there are a lot of tombstones here that are broken or yeah. displaced. That's really obviously sad. time does that and, you know... It's... Yeah, and I think probably where it's on a hill, they yeah. get weather and... But it's sad. Yeah, never a good thing. One of the prettier churches you'll see, isn't it? Oh, yes. Wesley Love Chapel. It. I know, just regal. It stands on the hill and the sound looks like a place of refuge. Yes. I love the stained glass on the center and the, just the, the whole architecture is really beautiful. Oh, yeah. You see a lot of the old churches with the two entryway doors. Yeah. Uh, I know like the old primitive Baptists in Honeaker, the women would come in one side yeah. and the men the other. So I yeah. wonder if it was that kind of deal here. Very well could be. And if we're wrong, we'll certainly hear about it in the comments. Yes, well tell us, <laughs> we would like yeah. to know. I know we're here to learn Just as much as- Just be nice about it. <laughs> yeah, we're here to learn as much as show. Yes. It's just fascinating, fascinating. Yeah, here's some of that. Hey Shane, what do you think of when you hear he is risen? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, good. I was what? just testing you. Oh. <laughs> just making sure that you weren't thinking of some kind of song or something. <laughs> well, no grave gonna hold my body down. That's... Well, that's, that's about <laughs> Jesus too. Okay guys, we hope you enjoyed this look at what would you call this? Robert Sheffy or mm -hmm. Wesley Chapel? Yeah, a little Robert Sheffy memorial video. Yeah. Yeah. And please, guys, watch for our book, Legends and Lore of Southwest Virginia. Come we hope is what it'll be called. Bookstore we'll toward you. Yeah, that's right. Let's say squash <laughs> that. But yeah. Coming to a local bookstore to you or Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the biggies will have it too. Before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. Hopefully. Now. I broke out of sweat today, but you were yeah. bragging that you didn't because you're, what was that you said about yourself? A little dainty woman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not really little though, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. You're dainty, aren't you? A little dainty woman. But we hope that you guys love hey. this video. We've loved being here and we're so excited to share our stories in our book with you. We I love, yeah, this is such a surprisingly a good day and, and gets us fired up more for the book. Yes. Because just coming and experiencing it and being here in this is great. Yes. Just wish all my hand wouldn't work that way. I'm so excited. So excited. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you on, on down, down the road. The road. <laughs>